Red Regional de Internet de la Región de Estados Unidos, Canadá, parte del Caribe e Islas, islas del Atlántico Norte. Welcome, John. Uh, thank you and good morning. Um, I'm honored to be speaking before you and seeing so many of you here. Um, I know out there somewhere there is sunshine, beach, surf, uh, um, and, uh, and yet you come here to listen to us. So I'm, I'm going to try to, uh, I'll be brief, uh, hopefully useful and productive with your time. Uh, I'm going to give an update on Aaron, also focusing a little bit on our outreach and communication activities. Our mission statement, as, as people are aware, very similar to the other RIRs, we support the operation of the internet through management of an internet number registry. And we also do what's necessary in terms of development of community policy and information awareness to make that registry a success. We're fairly focused, and what I mean by that is we're focused on being an RIR. We are, one of the things we're not, for example, is we're not a technical conference. Uh, some of the other RIRs have a, a network uh, operator conference or a technical conference co-joined. Aaron has not done that because we have NANOG in our region. So we're a very focused re regional internet registry, one of the five. And we serve, uh, as people noted in the introduction, Canada, US, and approximately half of the Caribbean. Um, so we have organizations we serve. 38,000, those are people who have address blocks that are in the registry that receive Aaron services. 22,000 of them are customers under contract. And uh, someone's like, well, who are you serving? Who's not on the contract? Uh, as people are aware, uh, there are people who received their address blocks in the early days of the internet, and these are referred to as legacy address assignments. And so we have about 16,000 legacy address assignment uh, organizations with legacy assignments in the Aaron region. Um, but a lot of those have either uh, signed RSAs and are now customers or have transferred their address blocks to someone who has them under agreement. So uh, the number is actually dropping of organizations not under contract. Uh, 22,000 under contract. Those are what we call Aaron customers uh, to address Jordy's question of terminology. And now we move on to members. And members has a very particular for, uh, definition in our case. A member is an organization that actually has certain legal rights in the governance of Aaron. They are allowed to vote for the board of directors and the advisory council. They have uh, rights guaranteed under law. Uh, we're incorporated in Virginia, a state of Virginia in the United States, and we're a uh, non-stock organization with members, and the law provides those members certain rights. So uh, 38,000 organizations served, 22,000 of them are organizations under contract. Uh, uh, and 59,000 member orgs. If you're an ISP, you're almost certainly a membership organization. Though we do have some member orgs who are uh, paying for membership or paying for what we call a registration plan and also are members. Now, um, let's talk about our outreach and community building, because uh, we do quite a bit of capacity building. Uh, if you looked at this two years ago, three years ago, you wouldn't see much, but we've been doing an increasing amount. Um, so we do uh, global community engagement, I'll talk about, uh, Caribbean initiatives that have ramped up, our training in general, Aaron has not been known for its training efforts, and uh, we're now changing that bit by bit. Our outreach overall and uh, community grant program, something new for us. Our global community engagement, I, I want people to be aware that Aaron is engaged on the internet number registry issues on a global basis. We actually participate in meetings all over the world. We consider ourselves a resource for people who want to understand how the registry system works. We find an increasing number of governments and government organizations who have an interest in knowing how this internet works and what the role of the RIRs are. Um, we coordinate our messaging with the other RIRs, but we are in uh, many organizations uh, and participate globally to make sure that if they need information about the RIR system, we can provide it to them. Um, we don't do advocacy per se in this basis. We're not, there's nothing we're in front of governments saying uh, because governments can engage with each RIR if they want to do that. Uh, and we work closely with the technical community if a, a body wants a uh, technical uh, speaker, uh, industry association for uh, certain operating systems, certain PCs, people working on Internet of Things. We do quite a bit of uh, outreach to the industry uh, explaining what the RIR system is. Um, in terms of Caribbean, 
if you look at the logo, you'll see, I'm not sure if you can see the colors, but several of those letters are blue. Aaron is in the Caribbean, literally, A-R-I-N. And um, we actually have a program called Aaron in the Caribbean. We've uh, ramped it up recently. It's focused on community building in the Caribbean, uh, uh, getting more engagement in our policy development process, uh, outreach, letting people be aware of what's going on, and building capacity in uh, just Caribbean uh, organizations and people being able to find each other. So we are uh, working with the CTU, Caribnog, uh, Caribbean Internet Governance Forum, and Canto. Uh, it uh, was launched in Miami in 2018, and uh, it has a number of tracks, uh, internet number policy development track, a technical community track, working with Caribnog, and law enforcement public safety, uh, getting the communities that have common problems together to try to work on those. We had our second one just a month ago in April in uh, Barbados, very successful. Uh, three days of meetings, and uh, quite frankly, we're, we're very pleased. The, the Caribbean community has sort of uh, seen this as a, a nice event, and uh, we have a great amount of participation. So very happy there. Training. Um, we're now making training integral to Aaron for all of our initiatives. It's taking a bit of time, but now when we start doing things, in addition to talking about how we announce it to the community, we're, talking, we're trying to figure out how do we train? How do we have a training program or a module for someone who wants to know about that? Uh, too often we're referring people back, oh, if you want to learn about that, check the website here or check the announcement page. So we're trying to, before we go out and talk about training in things that are outside of Aaron, we're gonna work on training for things that are actually part of Aaron. So uh, some of our first items we're working on is leadership training. People have asked if I wanna run on our uh, Aaron Advisory Council, which uh, works on the policy process, or the Aaron Board of Trustees, what are the duties? How do I run? What do I need to know? So we're working on training on many internal aspects um, of the organization and, and how we work with the community. This will include uh, expanded fellowship, we have ramped up our IPv6 case studies. We have uh, about a dozen case studies of organizations that have deployed IPv6 in various modes. Uh, some completely standalone, uh, some on a transition basis, some ISPs, governments, universities. Uh, and if you want to learn how at least one organization's done it, the, white, the uh, case studies are a great guide. They're online. We're doing uh, education for law enforcement uh, on the nature of the registry system and how to use it. Uh, we're working on uh, training now with, for registration services. If registration services talks to someone on the phone and they say, I really want to know more about using um, you know, RDAP, we should have a module that they can refer that person to so that we don't have to do it interactively on the phone. We can do it with them, but if, say, and you can follow up after the call, here's the training you want to get started in it. Um, outreach, as I said, we have our uh, Aaron in the Caribbean initiative. We also have an Aaron on the road program, which people are aware of. We go to cities throughout our service area, Canada, US, and the Caribbean. We have a one day uh, sort of um, four to five hour meeting where we bring them up to speed. And this lets a lot of people, a lot of people, you have 38,000 organizations in the registry, but uh, not all of them show up to the meeting. And a lot of them aren't even really aware of Aaron's relationship to their address block. And so we found this very useful. A lot of people find it eye-opening. Uh, we're doing even a shorter version so we can get to more cities. Customer lunches, we're doing Aaron uh, lunch by the numbers where we're going out to cities having a, just a two hour lunch seminar to familiarize those people so that if they wanna get involved, if they wanna start participating, they know what's going on. It's a lot easier to hold a very short lunch seminar than it is to hold a all day event somewhere. Uh, we have our Aaron consultation and suggestion process, which is very active. It's how the community formally introduces something for consideration. Uh, and we're doing registration services help desks with many conferences. So not just at our meeting, but we uh, pride ourselves in going out to meetings where we have Aaron members in large quantity, uh, wireless ISP, fiber ISP conferences, industry associations, and we'll put an Aaron help desk there to help them get the information they need to update their registrations uh, and become current. Um, community grant program. Our community grant program is the uh, just recently announced. Uh, the Board of Trustees thought we should be more involved with the community in terms of uh, letting, uh, if there's a good idea, 
and it's something that someone wants to do, not everything has to be done by Aaron, and, and yet we do have resources. So we've launched a community grant program. If there's projects that align with our mission, technical, registry processes, informational, um, we're willing to do funding. It's very modest, about 60,000 US dollars this year, uh, total for all the awards we'll be doing. And uh, it's uh, designed to make sure that we don't turn down good ideas or don't uh, uh, think that we have to do everything in house. If someone has a good idea that'll help the community, we're happy to do it with them. Uh, I will wrap up now and tell you I look forward to seeing you, uh, if not at a future meeting here or at one of the other RIRs. Aaron's meeting's coming up in October. It's in Austin, Texas, so uh, keep that in mind. We have a fellowship program for people who are interested. Thank you for having me. Uh, have a good day. Thank you very much for the presentation, John. Siguiendo la agenda del día, invitamos a Miquela Galante de Ripe NCC, el registro regional de Internet para Europa, Oriente Medio y partes de Asia Central. Por favor, Miquela, adelante.